All right, so we are in our Open Door series that we started on Easter Sunday, okay? We, we've talked about uh, several things. Last, year, last week, we talked about him being the open door to our healing. And this week, I want to go into uh, the topic entitled The Open Door to Purpose. Now, have you guys ever been asked that question, that very difficult question as a kid, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? How many of you guys were asked that question? You know that question. How many of you guys have asked that question unnecessarily way too many times to little kids in your life, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know. I'm five. Like, I'm just trying to get to tomorrow, like, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> how many, oh, gosh, I can't think of his, his, his name right now. Oh, somebody help me. You guys know the comedian. Oh, he's a Christian comedian. He said he, said he asked this kid, he asked his kid, hey, son. What do you want to be when you grow up? And his son says, I want to be an astronaut or a dinosaur. It's like, it's like we don't really know when we're, when we're young. But the reality is that the heart of that question goes to the heart of us trying to find purpose for our lives. And for those of us that, that love the ones that we're talking to, we want to make sure that they understand that they should be striving towards a purpose in their lives as well. That's the heart of the question, right? Uh, that's what we want to know. We want to make sure, hey, is your head on straight or is it like kind of dinosaur backwards, right? Like where are we going with this in your lifestyle uh, and in your life choices? And when I was 12, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was in my parents' home because where else would I be when I was 12, right? I was 12 and I was coming down the stairs and my mom was in the kitchen. I said, mom, she said, what? I said, I figured out what I want to do with my life. And my mom, you know, kind of like, ah. You know, like, you know how moms do when you know, like, you don't know what you're talking about, whatever. She kind of gave me that little bit of look. I said, I figured it out. She said, what? I said, I like to argue, and I like to compete. I want to be a lawyer. And so ever since I was 12 years old, that was my trajectory. That's what I wanted to do. And, and for those of you guys who, who don't know anything about me, I'm Pastor JJ. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm a lawyer during the week, and uh, I do this because I feel God's called me to this. But what I do during the week is my law practice, and I've been a lawyer now for over 20 years, uh, but I've wanted to be a lawyer since I was 12. Like, I figured out my career early on. Some of you guys maybe have figured out your career early on. Some of you guys are like, yo, I'm in my third career. I still haven't figured out which career I want, right? And, and that's okay. That, th there's a reason behind that. Uh, but even though I figured out my career early on, I didn't find my purpose out until I was about 25 or 26 years of age. Because all too often we, 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 um, we define ourselves by our careers when we should be defining ourselves by our creator, okay? And, and all too often we get lost in, in what, what we're good at, what we want to do, what we think we can do, what, what doors are open unto us. So, so we think that that's who we are. No, that's what you do. But who you are is your purpose. It's one thing to understand your career and your your. your your, what your profession is going to be, it's another thing to understand your purpose. Do we understand the difference? Don't worry, we're going to go into it today. Jesus is the doorway to purpose. I'm going to read several verses and I'm going to swing back around to them, but if you would, write these down. Ephesians chapter 1, well, you know, just write Ephesians 1 and chapter 3 because I'm going to read a lot through them today. So, we'll put it up there. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 13. And we got the Apostle Paul here speaking. And he says, praise be to God, <clears throat> to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. To be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who in her works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. 
And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. That's more scripture than many of us have read all week. Stay with me, okay? We're going to keep going. Ephesians chapter 1, 18, 21. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the enriches of his glorious inheritance, his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. For above all rule, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. Jump down with me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the, loves, Lord, the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Whoo! It was longer when I said it than when I was preparing it. Um, and, and I tried to, to condense it to give you only what I thought was important. But that's what we got because all that was important. I, I want to talk to you again, like I said, from the perspective that Christ is the open door to purpose. In order for us to understand purpose, let us define purpose. The word purpose that is used here means a couple of things. Let's go with definition number one. Definition number one of purpose is the intention to aim the goal of a matter or the proper function for which something exists. So when we say, hey, what's your purpose? We're saying, what is the proper function for which you exist? What is the aim? What is the goal? What is the intention for your life? That's what, that's what we need to learn to understand. If not, we're going throughout life without purpose, without intentionality. And if there's one thing that we strive to do here, especially at this church, is to make sure that as we go through life, we are going through life intentionally, to hit a goal, to hit an aim, to hit a mark so that we can live out the proper function for which something exists. Are you hearing me? So I'm going to break down what does it mean to live out purpose because, again, we've, at, we've been asked this question. We've asked this question. You know, we've, we've done it in different ways. What do you want to be when you grow up? Or what's the meaning of life? We, we, we need to understand purpose. And if we read through the scriptures, which we just read them through together, we see that all these things that we just read were given to us in Christ Jesus. Christ is the open door to purpose. So what's the first thing that I want us to understand purpose? Or, or let me say it this way. What is your first purpose? If I ask you that question, do you have an answer on your tongue right now? What is your first purpose? Who wants to shout something out? Let's have some participants. Shout, just shout it. Don't raise your hand. Listen, just shout, just shout me down. I'm okay with that. To be conformed to the image of the Son. All right. That's good. That's good stuff. We'll get to that in a second. But even before that, even before that, our first purpose, are you ready, is to simply be an heir to grace. Our first purpose as God's creation is to simply be an heir to grace. We read it throughout this scripture that we are heirs. We have received the, in, the inheritance through Christ Jesus. And some of us get life so twisted, and, and that was the right answer, and that's going to be my point number two, said in a different way, to be conformed to, to the image of Christ. But, but first of all, we need to learn to be an heir of grace. 
Do you, does everybody understand when we say the word heir, what we mean? You are the beneficiary of an inheritance. You are the one who has the right to receive from the giver all that the giver wants to give. And sometimes we get this so messed up, we don't realize that we just learned, need to learn to simply be an heir of grace. Just simply be a beneficiary of God's grace. So, so what's the breakdown? What's the reward of grace? We read it throughout the scripture. Let me, I, I think I, we got it up there for you on the screen. Here's, here is the breakdown of the reward of grace. The first one is we have every spiritual blessing. Did you know you have every spiritual blessing? According to what we just read, you got every spiritual blessing, every possible blessing you could have, God's already given it to you. And we walk around like we ain't blessed. We need to learn to be an heir of grace. Okay, we've been given adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, where we, as we were, were before, not a child, now we are a child in Jesus Christ. We can live out the riches of God's grace. I, I need you guys to let this sink in for a second, because this is everything we just read from, from two scriptures. We have hope through the riches of his glory inheritance. Stay tuned for next week when we talk about the doorway to hope. All right. We got hope. Some of us need a little bit of hope. Right. We have incomparably great power. I don't know if you read it, but there was about four times in the scriptures we just spoke where he talks about his power and his working in us. Some of us go through, so, go through life so defeated because we are simply not being an heir to grace. He says, as heirs, we have incomparably great power. The same power, might I add, that rose Jesus from the dead is at work in us. We need to just be heirs. We have glorious riches that he may strengthen us with power through his spirit, his spirit in your inner being. He's moving in you. And we've got this power at move in us. He allows us to be rooted and established in love. And he allows us to live out his wide, long, high, deep. And this love that comes from Christ, which is that nature, wide, long, high, and deep. And he's filled us to the measure of all the fullness of God. Guys, this is the breakdown of the reward of grace. This is everything that he's given us to. We just need to learn to sit back. Let me ask you this. Have you ever just sat by the pool, sat by the beach, just take, soaking in the sun, just soaking in the environment, just taking it in? They may like to do that, or am I just, you know, just, just take it in, just take it, or just sit down and chill on the hammock, sit down and chill in the backyard, or wherever you sit down and chill, and just soak it all in? We need to learn to simply just live in the glorious realm of grace. Your first purpose, as a, it's not striving to be something or striving to do something. It's simply to be an heir of grace. Are you hearing me? Like there's a different way to look at it. It's like you don't have to strive to be a son or a daughter. You are a son or a daughter if you have believed in Jesus Christ. You need to just simply be. The, the, there is a reward of grace that comes just by simply being. The word of grace through Christ comes because you are connected, because you know someone. When I was about, uh, I want to say, when I was about 19 years old and I was in law school, no, it was about 21, I was in law school, and in the summer of, after my first year of law school, we had, we did like internships. You guys know what internships are, right? So I was doing an internship at the state attorney's office. And I wasn't nobody. I was, I was filing papers. I'm going to be honest with you guys, right? I was filing papers in an office. That's an internship, whatever, right? But the fact is, as an intern, I had an ID. And that ID said that I was an intern of the state attorney's office of Broward County. And I would hang that ID on the car window, you know, the, the, the rear view window, I would just hang it there because I would take it on, put it off when I went in and went out. And, and, and one day I found myself doing about 75 and a 35, okay, and this is not an endorsement of speeding, okay, so kids shut your ears, at least my kids anyway, okay. I was doing about 70 and a 75 and a, and a 35, I, I would like to say I didn't realize, but I knew exactly what I was doing, and I got pulled over. 
And when I got pulled over, what did the cop do? Give me your driver's license and, you know, registration and all that and, you know, whatever. I handed it to him. And he noticed my ID, my ID on, on the mirror. And he says, what, you work for the state attorney's office? I, I wanted to say yes, but that would have been a lie. It would have got me in a lot of trouble. But I said, well, I don't work there, but I'm an intern there. And I started dropping names. Have you ever dropped names? Right? I said, yeah, I'm an intern for the assistant state attorney, Ed Walsh. I remember his name. Right? He's long since retired. I don't know if he's still living, but long since retired. And I said, yeah, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm an intern for assistant state attorney, Ed Walsh. I said, do you know him? He says, man, I've been doing this for 15, 20 years already. You better believe I know Ed Walsh. And I said, yeah, well, see, I'm his intern. I was the one that was filing papers and making sure the copier had enough paper in the copier, but I was his intern, right, because I knew somebody, and I told him that, and I said, yes, I, I interned with him, and he says, all right, well, then you do me a favor, watch your speed in this area, and just go and have a good day, because I don't think Ed Walsh would want me writing his intern a ticket. See, it, it wasn't because I did something, it was because I knew somebody, you understand? I just needed to be who I was in the moment, and I was somebody who knew somebody. That was it. We need to learn to live in the grace of God because the grace is exactly that. It is something that is grace. It's a free gift given. You didn't do anything to earn it. So you just need to receive it and enjoy the rewards that come from it. You need to learn to just be. Your first purpose, your first goal, your first aim, your first intention, your first understanding of the reason why you exist is to be an heir. Just be a son. Just be a daughter. Are you hearing me? Be an heir of grace. Just be. Just be. And as being, when you, when you just be an heir, be a son, be a daughter, we have to learn something. We have to learn that we are supposed to enjoy that sonship or that daughtership. I, I need you guys to hear this in a special kind of way. How many of you guys have gone through issues or problems or struggles in your life? Raise your hand, everybody. Because if you did, I'm about to give you my microphone. You're going to preach because I need what you got. Everybody has gone through a struggle. Everybody has gone through an issue. Everybody has gone through a battle in their life. That's facts. No, none of us can deny that, right? How has that battle or how has that struggle impacted how you be? Because for most of us that struggle, the battle, the thing that we went through has made us to act like someone we are not. We, we've not remained steadfast in the position of somebody who is an heir to grace. What do I mean? You guys remember the, the verse Romans 8.28 where it says that he works all things for the good of those that, are, that love him and are called according to his purpose. You guys remember that? He works all things for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. All things, both good and bad, work towards a purpose. That word purpose is the purpose that we're talking about now. He says, whatever you've gone through, I work it for a purpose. I work it for the end game. I work it for the intention. I work it because this is what you need to be working out to be, excuse me, to be who you were supposed to be. And so if we go through a struggle, did you know that Paul wrote? And I know most of you guys know this, but did you know that Paul wrote a big portion of his, uh, of, of the books in the Bible from prison? But you'd never know it if you didn't know it. Why? Because he was like, oh, I'm in jail, help me out, yeah. send me some food stamps, send me some. He wasn't like that. You would never know he was in jail because it didn't matter that he was in jail because he was just being. He, he, he could have he been on the beach soaking it all in. You wouldn't have known the difference because he was being. His circumstances did not define who he was. Who was he? He was an heir to grace. He knew who he was. He wasn't crying when he got into a fight with his spouse. And I'm not trying to knock the fight. So I get into my wife, she could fight. Believe me. Y'all know. Some of y'all know. And if she's watching, I love you, baby. Yeah. She always can come home and start fighting because I taught her she's a fighter. Right. You, you understand? Like, 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 like they weren't complaining because they lost their job. 
They weren't complaining because of a financial struggle, and I'm not trying to make light of that, but the reality is, if that happens, you have to know that God is still putting it together to get you to where you got to go because you just are an heir of grace. If we are not enjoying the fact that we are an heir of grace, something is off. We are not understanding who we are. You understand? There's a story in the Bible, it's not in my notes, but you guys remember the prodigal son who went away, he wasted everything that he had, and then he came back. If, if my father would just hire me as one of his servants, I could be back in the house again. The problem with that story is that there was another brother who was living in the house. He never left the house. The problem with that son is he didn't know who he was. He got mad at the father. He's like, yo, I've been here my, every single day doing what you asked me. And this son of yours, he went away and he wasted everything you gave him. And now he comes back and you want to throw a party? And you want to give him the good steak? Like, what's up? You gave him the family ring? Like, like dad, I've been here the whole time. The dad looks at him and says, look, this son of mine, he was lost and now he's found. You've been here the whole time. What was the problem with that son? Is he did not understand that he was an heir of grace. He didn't understand that his purpose was to just be. Is anybody hearing me? Like, like, we've got to learn to just be. Like, we've got to learn to just enjoy the presence of God. And if we're not enjoying him through every situation and every circumstance, there is a failure of our identity. There is a failure of our purpose. We need to learn, like, hey, man, this didn't work out, but you know what, God, let's do this. Like, whatever's going to happen, let's happen. We, I didn't want to have to go through this, but we're going through this. You know, we've all had a bad day. You know, the problem is that we're not like Paul, like, where he's in jail. And he's like, oh, this is so good. I'm free. I'm, I'm in chains, but I'm still free. Don't worry about me. I'm all good. No, some of us had a bad day, and everybody got to know about it. Some of y'all got a bad minute, and everybody's got to know about it. Am I speaking facts or not? Like, if you don't know about it, you're going to know about it. Yes or no? Like, something goes wrong, and, and you catch an attitude with everybody. You guys ever been the receiving end of that attitude? You're like, what did I do? What I do? Like, like, you had a fight with that person, and what did I do? Like, why are you bringing it here? I, I, you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, we've got to learn. I, I love when I look around, people are like, <clears throat> Hitting each other like, uh huh, that was you yesterday. <laughs> that was you on the way to church, huh? Huh? You guys understand what I'm saying? Like, like, <laughs> some people be like, <laughs> like, like, I would raise my hand faster, but I ain't trying to get into trouble. <laughs> guys, we need to learn to just be an heir of grace, to enjoy his presence, to enjoy who we are, to enjoy when things don't go our way, knowing that it's still working for our good. Is that hard to understand? Sure, it's hard to understand. But if you know because you know, look, my kids don't, 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 don't ask me for permission to go to the fridge anymore, right? Like, they just go, they just grab the food. They grab whatever, even whatever they weren't supposed to grab. Why? Because they're a child. They're just, they're, they're enjoying what's in the father's house. Are you hearing me? Danny, help me up in the back there. We've got to learn to enjoy, uh, or let me say this again. Our first purpose is to simply be an heir to grace. A second purpose is to be a living demonstration of that grace. When you understand who you are, now you need to be a living demonstration of that grace. The second definition of purpose, this word purpose that we've just read, is an object to be kept in view. This word purpose, I'm going to go to my, my Bible geeks for a second. If you're familiar with the Old Testament form of worship, there was the tent of meeting. And the tabernacle. And the priests had the obligation to essentially tend to the Lord, offer the sacrifices, but there was a setup that had to go down. One of the things of the setup, one of the things of the handling of the, of, of the place of worship in the Old Testament was something called the showbread. The showbread. The showbread, 
And, and I found this so weird, and, and, and I, I couldn't get it together for a moment. But the showbread is the same word to use that they use in the New Testament to describe purpose. So purpose means the aim, the goal, the intention, the reason for which something exists. But it also says the showbread. It's the same word. So when we think about the showbread, if God says purpose is showbread, we need to look to what was the purpose of the showbread. What, what was the meaning of the showbread, okay? The showbread was an object that was supposed to be kept in view. It was also known as the bread of his presence. The showbread, something very interesting about it, the loaves, they were uniquely shaped. They were heavy. They are like 11 pounds. Could you imagine an 11-pound piece of bread? We're talking about, you know, cake, like something really heavy. And each one of the showbreads were about 11 pounds, give or take. They were uniquely shaped, and they had to remain whole and unbroken during the baking and afterwards. What was the second purpose, guys? I need you to stay with me. It was to be a living demonstration of that grace. So our purpose is to be like the showbread. So what was the showbread? They were whole and unbroken both during the baking and after the baking. Like during the trial and after the trial, you need to keep it together. Are you hearing me? Like this is our purpose. How do we live as a demonstration, a living demonstration of the grace that we are an heir of God. Like when you go through your trial, that you remain together because you're such an heir, you know it. And others around you, they know you're going through something, but you are demonstrating the peace that surpasses all understanding. Because as you go through the fire before and after, you remain unbroken. I'm not going to say you ain't going to have moments, but you ain't broken. You remain together when things don't go your way. The loaves, they were standing, the showbread, they were standing exposed to the air for a full week. And because they were made according to the way that God told them to be made, how many guys understand that you were marvelously and wonderfully made? You were made just the way God intended you to be made. So they have, there was a special recipe. And because of that special, they never became moldy or dried out. Guys, it, it, we, it, if you feel dried out, you're not living out your purpose. And that's not a statement of judgment. That's a statement for us to take a look in the mirror. If you feel dried out, it's because we're not living as an heir. We're not just simply being an heir. The loaves had to be baked quickly so they wouldn't become leavened. What does that mean? They, they had to be formed quickly. Like some of us have to go through some stuff very quickly, really quickly, so that we are not contaminated by the things that would seek to contaminate us. The showbread was always in the presence of God. Let me just say that if we are to be a living demonstration of grace, the grace and the joy that is within us needs to be on full display at all times. Are you hearing me? On full display at all times. I remember growing up, we used to live in, in Jersey and, and, and during the winter, you know, every now and then we would go to to, to the city, and, and you guys know, you've seen it, if you haven't been there, you've seen it, right, the storefronts are in the storefronts, they, they do them all up in the storefronts, like in the holidays, everybody's got a cool storefront, what's the purpose of the storefront, it's not just to show off who's better down the block, the whole purpose of the storefront, whether it's during the holidays, or during just the normal days, what's the whole purpose, is to show off, to draw in. Guys, we need to be a living storefront. That's our purpose. When you learn to just be an heir of grace, then you can step into the place of being a demonstration of that grace. So, Pastor, that's cool, but how? Well, the third thing that I want us to understand about purpose, and with this I'll pull it together, is that your purpose is unique. Your demonstration of grace is for your time and space. Your demonstration of grace is for your time and space. What does that mean? Well, about 18 years ago, I, I received the Lord about 21 years ago. And 18 years ago, I was already in law school. 
or excuse me, I had, I had already graduated because I received the Lord when I was in law school. I had graduated from law school. I had passed the bar. I was now a practicing attorney. But because I had gotten saved and I understood that I needed to be an example of grace, I started serving in my church. I just started doing something. Whatever, whatever was needed, I was always down to serve. If it was putting out the chairs, it was putting out the chairs. If it was putting out the it didn't matter what it was. I was down to do it. And, 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 and as I was allowing God to just use me in whatever needed to be done, Summer Thrive Living Groups came out, right? Whatever they were called back then. And they're like, hey, who wants to be leader? I said, I want to be a leader. I don't know nothing. I never preached. I'm down. I'll, I'll serve. Got to go to an encounter. I'm down. I'll serve. Whatever it is, I'll do it. And, and, and I, just because I started doing it, God started using me in those areas. Just like he's going to start using you when you're willing to be used by God in different areas. And, and as we were going, we were going, and it stepped into a bigger role in leadership. And we started running up a portion of, of, of the church. And then... You know, people, we weren't pastors, we weren't ordained as pastors, but people would start calling us pastors, and we were like, slow your roll. Much like, you know, Danny T, when we call him a pastor, he's like, slow your roll, but now he's kind of settled into the role. So when y'all see Danny, be like, yo, what's up, pastor? Okay. And, and, and one time I remember my brother-in-law, who is a worship leader, and he was a pastor on staff at the church. He said to me, he came up to me, he says, JJ, he says, if you were offered full-time ministry at the church, would you do it? Well, I, I started off this message by saying that when I was 12, all I ever wanted to do was be a lawyer. But, 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 but now I'm serving, and, and, and my response was, I don't think so. One, and, and I'm, a, I'm embarrassed to say this, but this is how our minds work. I'm like, the, the church couldn't afford my salary. Because I was young and ignorant. Anybody else ever been young and ignorant? Anybody presently young and ignorant? Raise your hand. All right. <laughs> right? I was, I was like, they, 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 can't, they can't afford my salary. I'm like, I can't do that. Not to mention, now I have to give up being this lifelong dream that I just started like three years ago. Why would I do that? That doesn't make any kind of sense. 1 Corinthians 7.17 7, says this. Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. Like, whatever your situation, you're called to just live as a believer. You're, you're called to live as an heir of grace in that situation. In my, in my situation, I was putting a limitation on God. I was telling God, God, there is no way you can make me a lawyer and also make me a pastor. So I'm going to choose what I've always wanted to do. How many of you guys have ever made a choice to do something that you've wanted to do to the exclusion of what God has asked you to do? And what I didn't understand was that God was so much bigger than my own imagination. I didn't know that I could do both. Nobody has ever told me I could do both. You understand? Like God can use you as a, as a doctor and, 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 and be a minister. God can use you as a housewife and be a pastor. Or a prophet or, or an evangelist or a teacher. God can use you wherever you are. Are you hearing me? Like, like you don't have to be on full-time staff to be a demonstration of the grace that God has given you. As a matter of fact, most people will never, ever be on full-time staff. That's why he tells us to be a demonstration of grace where you are. If you're on the football field, you'll be a demonstration of grace on the football field. Would love him or hate him, one of my favorite players from college football, Tim Tebow, love him or hate him, I don't care. Go Gators. Go Gators. That, that hurt a couple of my youth fans in the house. Go Gators. Sorry. I got the microphone, bro. You know what I'm saying? Go Gators. <laughs> so whether you like him or not, Tim Tebow... One of the best college football players ever. We could, we could debate his NFL career, but his, co his, his college days, homeboy was one of the best. And he often used his platform to demonstrate the grace. 
Guys, where you go, you are a demonstration of his grace. That is your purpose. See, the problem is we've been confused and said my purpose is my profession. It is not. Your profession is the unique time and space through which God uses you to be a demonstration of grace. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, like that's... If, if I'm a lawyer, I'm in the courtroom, and we're waiting for a court hearing, and in my life, I've sat down, and I've seen an attorney that's next to me, and I'm like, you all right? And they'll be like, no. I'm like, what's going on? Conversation fast forward. Well, let me tell you how I get through that situation. You understand what I'm saying? That God will have you in a place and a space to use you and only you because you were the only one that could be there. Think about the story of King David. It says in that book of Acts chapter 13 verse 36, it says, Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep, meaning he died. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. David lived his generation in his time. I, I think about some of us and I think about him and, and I think about what he went through. If you know his story, he went through some craziness. Some of it was self-imposed. Some of it was just because what it had to happen. But he was supposed to be overlooked and underappreciated. Some of us are complaining when we didn't get picked. David wasn't picked at first. Some of us have been overlooked and underappreciated. David, David had to defeat odds that looked undefeatable. He had to conquer the giants that were in his way. David had to be a fighter in his time so that he could leave a legacy for all time. Because he was supposed to be the king. And because he had to do those things, strike that, because he had done those things, he fulfilled his purpose in his own generation. Like, I understand today now that God is more creative than I ever gave him credit for. I didn't understand how God could, 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 first of all, I'm a lawyer. Y'all know the jokes, all lawyers are going to hell, okay? So, so, so the, and I get this all the time. You're a pastor? Ha, ha, ha. I thought all lawyers were going to hell. I'm like, ha, real original. It's like, you know, it's like, like it's, it's just as bad as the jokes for Juan, you know. Hey, you're Juan in a million. Ha, <laughs> ha, so just so funny. <laughs> Haven't heard that one a million times. How many of you guys have heard a lawyer joke? You were embarrassed to raise your hand. I saw you were like, ah, yeah. Guys, I didn't know that you could do both. Nobody ever told me. I didn't understand the fullness of my purpose. Can I just tell you that wherever you are, whatever season you are, you were intended to be the purpose of God. You were supposed to be an heir in that situation. And as an heir, you're supposed to be a demonstration of grace there. Don't, don't worry about, you know, when I'm a pastor, I'll be a demonstration of grace. No, that, that, maybe you'll be a pastor one day, and that's great. Praise God. We'll make a way for that. But you're not a pastor. You're a businessman. You're a businesswoman. You're a police officer. You are whatever you are. And where you are, you are uniquely positioned to be a demonstration of grace in that place, on that team, with those people, in that family. Let's start living our purpose today. Today. Are you hearing me? Like, live your purpose today. Are you hearing me? Like, like, do you know, like, like, while you're still trying to get it all together, all you got to understand first is that you are an heir to grace. Just be. Just be. And as an heir to grace, just demonstrate that grace. Just be love to someone who needs love. Be joy to someone who needs joy. Remain unbroken. Remain out there. Remain, remain as somebody like the showbread, that, that you're just, that you're out there, man, for people to see. With all your imperfections and all your flaws, but unbroken. Are you hearing me? Would you guys stand to your feet? Father, I just thank you today. I thank you today, Lord, for a greater understanding of who we are. 
that our purpose, the reason for which we exist, is much more simple than we ever thought. That we can simply just be an heir to grace, the beneficiary of all that you already put before us. And that we can be a demonstration of that grace to others. And Lord, help us to understand that we are uniquely positioned right where we are. Don't, don't, don't wait until you're somewhere to be a demonstration of his grace that he's given you now. You are there. Be a demonstration of your grace. Some of us need to be demonstration to those in our old household first and foremost. You need to be a demonstration in your workplace. Be a demonstration on your team. Me to be a demonstration of grace in this house, in this church. Father, we thank you for this understanding. And I thank you, Lord, because the understanding of grace or the reality of grace was given to us by your son, Jesus. Today, Lord, I pray that you would deposit in our hearts the understanding of your grace, the unmerited and undeserved gift that you've given each one of us to be called a son or a daughter of God. To all who believe in your name, Lord Jesus. I want to speak to you for a moment as we close up and close out in worship. If you've never given your life to Jesus, or if you've never understood your purpose, I'm going to say a prayer where I give my life to Jesus to understand that I am an heir, where I believe in my heart that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died on a cross and he rose again, where I believe that truth in my heart and confess that truth with my mouth, because the word says that if I do that, then I'm saved. That I am no longer an enemy but a friend. And that I would now be a son or a daughter of God. If you've never given your life to Jesus and you know that something's speaking to you today and you want to you make that step of faith, you want to do that, I'm going to ask you together with those of us who have done it before to repeat this prayer together with me. If that's you, just go ahead and say something like this. Just say, thank you, Father for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and pay the price for my sins. Today, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Father, I thank you for everybody who prayed that prayer of faith today. Father, that they would have the full understanding of the riches of your glory, the riches of your grace, Father. That the adoption unto sonship right now, Father, would be made very real to them. That the love of Christ that is so high, so wide, so long, and so deep, Father, would permeate every part of their being that they may just be heirs of Christ from this day forward. Holy Spirit, cover us. Engage with us, Lord that we may walk out this life of life that we call faith. We thank you in Jesus' name. Online, if you gave your life to the Lord, we'd love to know about it. Connect with us, click up with us, drop a comment below so that we can walk this life of faith with you. And in-house, if you gave your life to Jesus, we also want to know about it. We want to walk with faith, this life of faith with you. So let us know after the service today, after the worship experience, let us know. We'd love to pray with you, and we want to do faith life with you.